What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video talking about the newest addition in Warframe, Steinax. A disclaimer for peeps, as he is a new Warframe, things that are mentioned in this video may be subject of change, so pay attention to release dates of the videos. You can easily grab Steinax by logging in for the first two weeks of the Veilbreaker update. Once the two weeks are over, you can easily get him by doing the call missions. I will go over his kit, all the interactions, as some of them are quite buggy and flawed. Starting off with his passive, Steinex gains crit chance when he has shields active. This crit only affects weapons, not his abilities, and that's 1% crit chance per 40 shields, so pretty mediocre. And it's a multiplier and not a flat increase, meaning it is additive to mods. However, this increase is doubled when using spear guns. Moving to the abilities, the first ability, Axios Javelin. You hurl a spear at an enemy, impaling that enemy to an object and create a vortex around that impaled enemy. All enemies affected by this are ragdolled and are unable to fight back. However, the duration only affects the impaled target, not the vortex. It is a decent crowd control ability, but has a few issues. One of them being you need to target an enemy to create the vortex. Two, it can be blocked by enemies with riot shields. Three, it has weird line of sight issues. His second ability, Theros Strike, has you throw piercing shields in a cone shape at enemies that stagger them and strip 50% of their armor and shields, which scales of power strength. However, with base strength, you can cast this ability twice to fully strip. And this armor strip multiplier stacks together with auras. So if you want to save some mod capacity and forma, you can change the aura to either run Curse Projection or Shield Disruption if you're going up against a solo faction. The third ability, Rally Point, it is a self buff that also affects allies. In squads, Steinex gains enemy aggro while this ability is active. The ability also grants energy regen over time, but not enough to replace Arcane Energize. And every kill or assist replenishes everyone's shields. Unfortunate about the enemy aggro while in groups because Steinex does not have great survivability. His fourth ability, his only DPS tool. Final Stand. When cast, you ascend into the air, creating clones of yourself and hurl javelins at your foes. The direct hits deal slash damage while also proccing bleed, which will then stack procs and deal bleed damage over time. And when the javelins collide with any obstacle, they explode, dealing blast damage. The main Steinex will hit enemies where you aim kinda, while the clones will deal damage around the horizontal edges. Casting speed only affects the initial cast and not the spear throwing animation. This ability does have line of sight issues and does not have obstacle punch through. There's another problem with this ability is that you're vulnerable to all incoming damage. So if you can't kill enemies fast enough while in the air, you don't get shields back with your third ability, which will then kill you. You cannot cancel this ability. Activating your first ability will only send you flying upwards into the air. Casting your second will have you walk around aimlessly till the fourth is done with its animation. You don't have clear direction of where your spears are going, and to give you a small sense of direction, you can use a glaive and secondary to have a reticle up at all times. This kind of helps you with aiming. Expect your damage to be greatly diminished in narrow tile sets. This ability needs a lot of space to be useful, as even trying to kill a priority target fails as the hitbox and AoE is quite janky. The amount of spears scale of duration, so if you stack a lot of duration, you're stuck up there. You can however go into your operator while casting this ability and protect yourself, only if you're using the Vazarin Focus Goal, but that is tedious and a waste of time. Now here's some things that can help this ability, DE. 1. Give us iframes when casting. 2. When active, 
Use either the fire button or aim button to concentrate your shots in a specific direction to tighten the spread of the spears and zero in on your target. 3. Allow us to cancel the ability by casting it again with a refunded reduced energy cost. 4. Give it punch through. And finally, number 5, test servers. S seriously, test servers. Alright, now that you have an idea of how he works, I will provide you with a couple of builds to take him out for a spin. Starting off with a non-helmet build that everyone can run, and something I would run on him more, since he's a pretty chill, casual frame that can go up against Steel Path. In the aura, I have Aerodynamic. This will reduce damage while you're airborne. This works well with his fourth ability. Pair this up with Aviator, which is an additional form of damage reduction, just like Aerodynamic. And to add more onto that, I am using Adaptation. Adaptation will build up stacks of resistance towards certain damage. Then these three paired up with the two Umbral Mods. Here I have Transient Fortitude and the two Umbral Mods, which gives me 210% power strength. This is way over 100% armor strip. Also provides me decent damage on the Javelins, and quite a decent amount of shield and energy regen. Now, for those who do not have Prime Surefooted, you, all you can do is use Aviator in the Exilus, and use handspring. That's about it. It's fairly simple. Of course, in the arcanes, I have energize and molt augmented. To be honest, this is a flex arcane. You can run whatever you want, but I'm using molt augmented just for more power strength, which will in turn give me more damage on my javelins. The second build is more towards crowd controlling and killing your enemies with a chill pace. Brief respite in the aura for the energy to shield conversion, because I did replace his third ability for resonator. Resonator is is Octavia's helmet ability. It crowd controls enemies, basically pacifying them. Power strength at 199% with Transit Fortitude and Umbral Intensify. We're just missing 1%. Kill a couple of enemies at the start and you have more than enough power strength to fully armor strip them. Stretch and reach for the great coverage on Resonator and great crowd control from his first ability. And this build is pretty much useful anywhere you want. This build is for people who pay attention more because it does utilize the shield gating mechanic. Prime Flow and Equilibrium will pair well with my Panzer Volpophila because it uses the synth mods. Quickly taking a look at the Panzer, the mutagens do not matter. It has your go-to Panzer mod and of course the synth mods. Enemies injured will provide you with health orbs and Fiber will allow you to pick up health orbs even though you're full HP. And how is it dealing damage? Well, with Viral Quills. The primary weapon does not matter. You can use this as a stat stick for the Amalgam Serration mod to give you sprint speed. Other than that, I will be using the Epitaph and Glaive just to be in my Glaive and Secondary combo. So it gives me a reticle for his fourth ability. The Epitaph build is fairly straightforward. Now that Reflex Draw is no longer considered a holster speed mod, you can remove this and put Suppress, which works works with a lot of invisible warframes. Viral and Heat is modded for Viral and Heat, and of course, the Quick Fire will proc Blast and Cold. And for the Glaive, mod it for the faction you're going up against. We have our damage, crits, more damage, and of course, heavy attack windup speed, corrupt charge for the initial combo, and of course, the crit damage combo, and finally, volatile quick return for that explosion. The focus school can be whatever you want, but if you're using a squisher build and you want to be safer, you can opt to go with Vazarin. Vazarin is using the protective sling, basically giving you five seconds of invulnerability. For the resonator build, I highly advise to use a decaying dragon key. A decaying dragon key will of course reduce your shield value and allow you to replenish your shields a lot faster. However, for the first build, utilizing no helmet and running the aviator and aerodynamic combo, you can opt out of the decaying dragon key. Alright folks, that has been it from this Steinax build guide and review. If you enjoyed and learned something from this video, please Feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.